Yellowstone Biscuit Basin eruption may have created new geyser. Geologists have revealed new details about a recent geyser eruption in Yellowstone National Park, including the shallow depth of the eruption and the surprising height of its plume. A geyser that erupted last week in Yellowstone National Park sent water and rock debris 600 feet into the air, scientists say, six times higher than previously reported. Geologists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory estimated the height of the plume by examining photos posted on social media. They also determined the location and depth of the eruption, which occurred July 23 at Black Diamond Pool in the Biscuit Basin, about 2 miles 3.2 kilometers northwest of the famous Old Faithful Geyser. The eruption occurred suddenly, and there were no early signs detected by monitoring instruments. Michael Poland, a research physicist at the U.S. Geological Survey and the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, said in the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. No one was injured, but the blast damaged a nearby boardwalk, and the basin remains closed while geologists assess the activity. Researchers analyzed rock fragments ejected in the eruption and found that they were made of glacial material, sandstone, siltstone and gravel that lie just below the surface. The eruption did not eject bedrock buried about 175 feet 50 meters deep, indicating that the blast was very shallow. Shallow geyser eruptions are common in Yellowstone, Michael Poland said. The damage caused was minor compared to what might have been expected. The blast mostly sent debris toward the Firehole River and away from a nearby boardwalk, where tourists were standing at the time of the eruption. The largest rock confirmed to have been ejected by the eruption weighed several hundred pounds, but it fell far from visitors. A blockage in the underground hydrothermal system beneath the Biscuit Basin likely triggered the eruption. Mineral deposits in the water pipes that run beneath Yellowstone and feed its geysers can block steam and hot water from passing through. The obstructions cause a buildup of pressure that can eventually overcome the strength of the surrounding rock, triggering an explosion. The eruption likely rerouted a shallow hydrothermal pipe system in the Biscuit Basin. By shifting the ground beneath the surface, the explosion may have returned the area to a calmer state or it may have created new geysers. It's not known how the thermal features will respond, but data that geologists collect from the debris from the explosion will provide more details about the exact conditions at the time of the event. In May, scientists discovered a crater several feet 1-2 meters wide in the Norris Geyser Basin, 18 miles north of Biscuit Basin. They examined acoustic and seismic data from a new monitoring system in the basin and confirmed that hydrothermal venting was occurring. But the data lacked a clear procedure that could potentially be used to develop a warning system. Long-term research into the locations of hydrothermal vents and other ground disturbances that could occur in Yellowstone is the focus of University of Wyoming geology professor Ken Sims, who has used ground-penetrating radar and other techniques to identify problem areas. That information is critical for building roads and bridges in Yellowstone. Anytime you're building a super active system like that, 
you have to pay attention to what's going on. But while eruptions like the recent one in Yellowstone can be predicted, there's no feasible way to prevent them, Poland said.